How did China's most iconic flower leave the Orient and conquer the horticultural world? What secret does this particular peony hide? What's going on in these remote mountain valleys? Listen to the voice of the peony and explore the legend of this delicate bloom. For the first time, the mysteries of the peony lay bare. A modern metropolis, where paths of fashion often have enough chances to follow the footsteps of tradition. This is Taipei's oldest fabric market. Huang Jiaxiang is 35 and a fashion designer. He's here looking for fresh inspiration. These cotton prints, dyed with peony patterns, are called Grandma's Red Flower Cloth in Taiwan. The fabric has, for hundreds of years, been held warmly in the memories of the locals. For a long time, these classical designs were indeed the source of Wong's inspiration. Wong won the award for the best use of fabrics in the International Apparel Federation Design Contest in 2009. He was the first new fashion designer from Taiwan to have won such an award. It was his use of the traditional Taiwan peony print cotton that earned him his success. <laughs> With a new round of international fashion shows coming up, this pioneer designer is delving deeper into the past to move forward. He is heading south from Taipei to Tainan. This is an ancient embroidery shop in Tainan, which has only produced a single kind of embroidery called Eight Immortals Embroidery for over 100 years. The design alludes to the famous folktale of the Eight Immortals, and the peony is a key element. <laughs> <laughs> Eight Immortals Embroidery is an important folk art in Tainan. Unlike cotton prints using plain textile printing, it's based on a unique style of three-dimensional embroidery. The elegant nature of the peony is fully displayed. It's an eye-catching part of traditional Chinese culture.
It's a completely new aesthetic experience for him. Wang would never have imagined that the traditional Chinese pianist should be able to make such a strong impression on the world. Originating from deep in the Qinling Mountains, the tree peony today has spread all around the central plains of China and out into the world beyond. From dawn to 10 a.m. each day is when Monsieur Riviere is at his busiest. It's between these hours that he collects the pollen he needs to create new varieties of peony. He runs the largest private peony farm in Europe. Provence has a latitude 10 degrees higher than that of Lorient. The spring temperatures advance more slowly, and the flowering season arrives correspondingly about a month later. In a region known for its lavender, peony farms of this kind are relatively rare. Riviere's peonies attract people from all over France. This is the most popular peony variety in France. In China, it's usually known as richness. It has a rosy color and intriguing folds. These popular red peonies have been carefully nurtured by the Riviere family for over a hundred years. Today, European growers produce more than 700 varieties of peony. Elle est aussi majestueuse, sinon plus que le rosier. Je sais pas comment l'expliquer. Pour moi, la pivoine, quand elles arrivent en fleurs, qu'elles arrivent à éclater en bouton, je vais les voir tous les jours parce que c'est beau. Je sais pas comment l'expliquer. C'est quelque chose de particulier, la pivoine, c'est vrai. Three peonies arrived in Europe about 200 years ago. In the late 18th century, British plant hunters began scouring the earth for new species to introduce for leisure and commerce. In a flower market at Guangzhou, they encountered these beautiful flowers of oriental peony species for the first time. Although Europe had several native species of peony, the Chinese varieties became all the rage. At one time, the price of a single plant was equivalent to the annual income of a clerk or office worker. On just over seven hectares of land, the Riviere Peony Farm produces all the varieties of peonies available in Europe. The current owner is the fifth generation of his family to run the estate. The family got into the peony growing business around 160 years ago, shortly after their first introduction to France. It will take nearly a month for Riviere to edit his nursery's annual catalog. They have published a new catalog every year since 1902, detailing the new varieties available. Le fait d'aujourd'hui de diriger une entreprise qui fait vivre une culture, une une culture pivoine et qui est un un héritage familial. Donc euh, ceci donne une, euh, une, une, certaine, euh, une certaine responsabilité par rapport à ses ancêtres. 
For more than 100 years, these albums have been the most authoritative guide to peony growing in France. They also bear witness to the peonies' expanding empire in the gardens of Europe. The Peonies' conquest of Europe began more than 13,000 kilometers away from a village in western Shandong province. The first snow of the year has just settled. This is a folk art, widely practiced in the villages across the region. It's known as making flower tributes. Flower tributes are usually used to pay respect to one's ancestors or the gods. But in Jiaolu village, the custom has a special significance. These hand-carved flowers, birds, fish, beasts, and pavilions will feature as auspicious tributes in a special ritual to take place later in the day. In the days gone by, there are records of how men from the area would set out through the snows of winter with wheelbarrows loaded with peonies. They would push them all the way to Guangzhou City, 1,600 kilometers away. When Chinese New Year came, just three peonies would sell for the same price as over 650 square meters of land. Zhao Sheng Wu is 61 years old and an expert on forcing flowers. Forcing means bringing the flowers into bloom ahead of their natural season. The peonies forced into blossom are extremely likely to die. Each year before they begin to force their peonies, the villagers of Zhao Lu hold a ceremony to pay respects to the ancestors and pray for their blessing and support. This year's ceremony is being paid for by Zhao Xing Wu, and he's preparing the most important tributes himself. <coughs> Zhao Xing Wu is the latest in a long line in his family. It's a very long line, dating back over 300 years to the Ming Dynasty. And Zhao himself is the 23rd generation to work in the family business of flower forcing. The names of his illustrious ancestors are inscribed on these sheets of red paper. <laughs> The village's two most famous peony varieties, Richness and Zhao's Pink, form the central icon of the ceremony. Who is Richness? That was the very first variety that made its way from Guangzhou to England. After peony fever swept the Tung Empire, the plant spread far and wide, notably between the Yellow and Yangtze rivers. It wasn't until the 14th century that the peony finally rooted itself in West Shandong, but once it had, it never looked back.
This is the most important part of the ceremony. The floral icon is carried around the village three times, surrounded by all the villagers. As with many villages and small towns in China, almost the entire population is engaged in the same industry. In Jiaolu village, this means forcing peonies. Wherever the villagers travel across the country, the spirit of the peony and their ancestors rests in their hearts. Guangzhou is the oldest foreign trade port in China. Normally, the peony would not survive in the subtropical climates of China's deep south. But the forced peonies brought down in midwinter for the Chinese New Year were another matter. It was these that caught the eye of the English plant hunters. At the end of November, Zhao Sheng Wu arrives at the largest flower market in Guangzhou. His ancestors would have taken 40 days to push their barrows here. Zhao drives it in under two days. Experience and technology are the keys to the flower forcing business. Normally, plant losses are below 20%. This year, a sudden change of weather killed nearly half of Zhao's 2,000 pots of peonies. Even so, if all the remaining plants sell, Zhao will still make a tidy profit. The week before Chinese New Year is peak season for the flower markets of Guangzhou. In Fujian and Guangdong, people like to greet the New Year with flowers to pray for peace and prosperity in the coming year. Zhao needs to sell all his stock before the first day of the Lunar New Year. Otherwise, they will become unsaleable. Today is the first day the peonies hit the market. Zhao Xing Wu spruces himself up to meet his customers. Nearly 100 flower growers from Zhao's hometown have come to the flower market in Guangzhou. They bring with them tens of thousands of potted peonies. In the Guangzhou market, the forced peonies are priced according to the number of buds. Each bud is valued at 20 yuan. One peony plant has 10 buds on average. Zhao could stand to make around 200,000 yuan. Zhao has been in the business for 30 years. This year, he finds himself in an awkward situation. The market is slow, and he has only sold just over 100 peonies in several days. In Zhao's book, peonies are an expensive rarity. He's not used to haggling with others over price. <laughs> Like the unpredictable weather, the peony market in Guangzhou has taken a chill.
The floral competition has hotted up. Today, there are more than 6,000 types of flowers, all in full bloom from all around the world, fighting for the eye of the festival buyers. Where once the peony ruled the roost, it now must take on all comers to defend its crown. The world has turned, and the 23rd generation flower forcer now faces the unknown. How he would envy the lot of growers in another continent. The Netherlands is the world leader in the global horticultural market. Each year in this season, the Wellman Nursery is busy processing orders from the UK, Italy, France, and elsewhere. It's a peony colony in the kingdom of tulips. European countries are the largest market for peonies. Each year, they buy up to 1.4 million plants, of which 200,000 are supplied by Wellman. Toen ik geconfronteerd werd met de boompion, dacht ik van hij gaat afsterven en dat is weer hetzelfde als een gewone pion. Maar dat is niet zo. Deze plant verhoudt, blijft boven de grond en in het voorjaar is het een van de eerste planten die aangeeft van het. Uh, De zomer komt er weer aan en als je dan in mei de bloemen ziet, gewoon geweldig. Wellman is one of the largest peony suppliers in Europe. He has been in the peony business since 1985. Each March he imports seedlings and cultivates them in his modern greenhouses. Two months later they will enter the market. These seedlings come directly from China, or from another country, Japan. Daikon Island is the largest center for peony growing in Japan. From the heyday of the Tang Dynasty and the first arrival of the peony, the Japanese searched their country for the perfect peony environment. In the end, they found Daikon. This is the largest private peony farm on Daikon Island. Mr. Watabi is the owner of the farm and is worried about the prospect of a sudden heavy rain. Hiroyuki Wataabi has been a flower grower for more than 20 years. He's not worried about the rain affecting the growth of his plants, but he does worry about their appearance. Today is the island's annual cut flower competition. It's the country's most important event for professional peony growers. Mr. Watabi is going to pick out his 10 best heads to present in the competition. Family honor is at stake. At 7 a.m., the growers start to arrive, one after the other, clutching their prize specimens. The contest begins in two hours. Would-be participants who arrive after 9 a.m. will be denied entrance. Mr. Watabi hasn't left his nursery yet. He's waiting for his greatest treasure, the Meili Snow Mountain, to reach the moment of its perfection. In Japan, peony flower heads rarely exceed 28 centimeters in diameter. The full crown of the Meili Snow Mountain is 34 centimeters. Mr. Watabi has been developing it for 10 years, but yesterday's heavy rain has threatened its debut. 
かけたくないって結構ですね。ちょっと待ちましょう。Family tradition dictates that it's only the head of the family who can be present at the contest. Watabi's father will witness the results on behalf of the family. The moment has come, and Watabi cut the head of the Meili Snow Mountain. 今島ボタン祭り2013とスタートいたしました。The long anxious wait almost cost the Watabi's right of entry. Daikon is a small island of just six and a half square kilometers. It has a population of more than 3,000. Almost every household grows peonies. When the flowering season comes, thousands of peony lovers from all across Japan will gather here. Peonies are honored in Japan as the cherry blossom or the chrysanthemum. Many grower families pass on the tradition from generation to generation over hundreds of years. Generations of horticulturists have created the most beautiful peonies with a pure Japanese sensibility. The Meili Snow Mountain wins the award for best new variety. It's the fourth time the Warabi family has won this award in the past 25 years. Since being brought back from China by their envoys during the Tang Dynasty, more than 300 new varieties of peony have been created in Japan. Over the intervening 1,200 years, these Japanese varieties have come to be distinguished as a group by their unique cultural aesthetic. Before their blooms fade, Watabi holds a special ceremony for his precious charges. No, He floats their cut heads on a wicker rack, the water to bear away their souls and express the family's gratitude for another year's bounty. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, a city is waking up. It's 5 a.m. in the morning in Olsmeer in the Netherlands. People are already hard at work. Alsmere is the world's largest flower market. The market has an annual turnover of more than one billion dollars. The flowers are sold to more than 100 countries. Only top quality plants can be entered for the Alsmere market. Every year in mid-April, about 20 days are set aside for peony auctions. By 7 a.m., all the flowers have been brought into the auction hall. The flowers traded here are destined to reach their final destination somewhere across the globe by that same afternoon. The buyers tend not to distinguish between the classic Chinese tree peony, Mu Dan, and the Chinese herbaceous peony of similar appearance, Xiao Yao. Every known variety of peony is auctioned here. Yet the market is still hungry for more. More blooms and more novelty in new varieties. The herbaceous peonies have their place in meeting this demand.
ambitions ride high in Yujong County in central Gansu province. 73-year-old Chen Dejong is a horticultural engineer. Over the past 40 years, he has created more than 100 new peony varieties. But one thing still eludes him. For the last eight years, he has been striving to breed a new variety based on the wild Yunnan yellow peony. But his attempts so far have only produced small blooms on plants with unstable characteristics. His dream is to cultivate a stable variety, which is pure yellow in color. Chasha The world's first yellow peony was the yellow crown, cultivated by the Japanese. Since then, other yellow peonies have been developed by the American and French growers. The junction between the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and the Lowest Plateau is one of the birthplaces of Chinese peonies. Every year in flowering season, Chen Dejong and his assistants collect the purple spot peonies abundant in his hometown. It's the most widely distributed variety in China. It also has very active genes, which makes it ideal for hybrid development. Most of the yellow peonies around the world are hybrids of the purple spot and the Yunnan yellow varieties. Chen Dejong hopes to find his own direction. The Tibetan peony is the rarest wild peony species in the world. It only grows in parts of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau that are 2,500 meters above sea level. Chen Dejong is fascinated by it. Carrying with him the purple spot pollen he collected in his hometown, Chen Dejong sets out for Tibet. It's a journey of more than 1,000 kilometers. The air on the plateau is thin. Here where the peonies grow closest to the heavens lies the hope for one man's vision of paradise. <laughs> At 2,000 meters above sea level, Ne Ying Chi is the birthplace of the Tibet peony. The flowering season arrives here one month later than the warmer central plains. This is a festival named for the Tibet peony. The celebration rests on the great good fortune of the locals. For it's only here, on the entire planet, that wild Tibet peonies grow along the 60-kilometer strip of their valley. On the other side of the valley lies the largest temple of the Red Hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Every day, religious believers from all over Tibet 
come to pay their respects. Watering the flowers is a daily chore. In the many years since two Tibet peonies were planted in front of the temple, nobody knows how many lamas have cultivated their souls in harmony with the flowers. Gasung has come here from Lhasa. He hopes to create new Tungka paintings based on the Tibetan peony. Tungka is a kind of scroll painting used in Tibetan Buddhism as an aid to meditation. Tungka paintings often feature flowers like the lotus or the peony. Their forms also decorate the edges of the scrolls sometimes appearing hundreds of times, large and small. The temple has the most devout practitioners and the most exquisite Tungka paintings. Peonies can be seen in many different forms, in gardens, in buildings, and on murals. Their bright yellow color flows ceaselessly through the ages. are the Funu Mountains. Their slopes are covered in dense forests. The region is wild and primitive. They are an extension of the Chinling Range that stretch for 400 kilometers. The local people refer to them as the lungs of the Central Plains. Even the birds sing its praises. Every year, beekeepers bring their charges into the mountains in search of flowers.
Bees are Cupid's angels for the breeding of plants. However, sometimes precautions need to be taken. Nature's fertility is random and chaotic. Nature could provide a fatal disturbance to manage cultivation. The researchers respect the laws of nature, but hope to maintain a scientific oversight at every step. This is the world's largest wild peony breeding ground. Since the 1990s, growers have worked hard in the mountains and carried out numerous tests and research. Finally, a miracle is growing from this soil. All nine varieties of wild peony are grown here. In 2001, after scouring the regions from the upper reaches of the Yellow River to the Yangtze Basin, with an elevation difference of 2,000 meters, the nine varieties were brought here and planted in the Funu Mountains by Chinese peony researchers. After five years of effort, the breeding center is well established and the possibilities to create new varieties of peony unlimited. A tempting fragrance leads a small beetle to a delicious meal. The hungry diner is blissfully unaware that it's rollicking around in the Tibet peony's very stuff of life and that it's leading others to an unexpected discovery. President of the Chinese Peony Association, Wang Lianying, pays close attention when the Tibet peony starts to bloom. Guidance from an insect has given these dedicated students of nature a helping hand. The Tibet peony is the only known peony species to have a nectary. Under the microscope, Wang Li An Ying finds that the pollen of the Tibet peony is the most inactive compared to those of other wild peony species. However, its unique nectar attracts more insects for pollination this guaranteeing reproduction. Such is the balance of nature, but this also explains why it's one of the most difficult to make hybrids with. Today at the Funu Breeding Center, there are already 15 new peony hybrids developed from wild peonies. Over the next 30 years, they will scale up to tens of thousands of plants. China's peony dream is unfolding before our eyes. One hundred kilometers north of the Funu, dawn breaks over the city of Luoyang. The home of that magical hybrid, the Luoyang Red. It's still the dynastic capital.
for 30 years, this song has been tied to the peony. Behind are the immutable feelings of the Chinese people towards this beloved flower. Across the world, the peony means so much in so many ways to so many different people. Scientists and artists, professional growers and private gardeners, those who seek honor and glory for their devotions, and those who simply enjoy the results of those labors. One thing unites them all. An 11th century philosopher, Xiao Yang, wrote, only when the peonies are in full blossom will endless happiness sweep the city. It remains true even today. The blossoming of the peony is a call to pursue one's dreams. <laughs>